After you install OWASP app, you may want a shortcut on the desktop. If you installed on Windows, this is easy. But if you install on Linux, it takes a little bit more work to get the desktop shortcut created. To speed things up, I've already created template.desktop that we'll use as an example for you to follow. And you'll be able to recreate this template.desktop and then go from there. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to change into the desktop directory where I put that template and then I'm going to open up the template and we'll see what's inside. Now, these will have several lines that you'll just copy as is and several lines will depend on where you installed Zap on your system. So let's take a look at Zap as it's installed on my system. It's in opt zap proxy, which is the default location. And inside of there, you're gonna notice that Zap actually comes with a template of its own, uh, OWASP zap.desktop, but it's only got the icon line and it. it doesn't have the other lines. It comes with a nice little picture that you can use with your shortcut. And then here is the shell script that starts Zap. So we want our shortcut or launcher to launch zap.shell, which will turn around and launch zap.jar and get the whole thing going. All right, now let's take a look at the template. So the first few lines, a couple of lines, you'll just copy as is. The icon line is the path to the PNG file that comes with zap. And the next line is the path to the zap.shell, again, that came with zap. Then for name, generic name, and comment, you can call these whatever you want. I just called mine OWASAP, OWASAP, and open OWASAP as examples. Leave the encoding, terminal, type, and categories as is, and then you'll save this file as a .desktop file extension onto your desktop. We still have a couple more steps to go, though. So now what we want to do is make the shortcut or launcher, as they're called, executable. So we're going to do kmod e plus x, and then the name of our file. That allows the desktop file to not just be a text file, but to actually be an executable file like a script. This still won't allow us to use the file to launch a program, though, because it needs permission from the operating system for a shortcut to launch a script. So if we right click on our newly created .desktop file and click on allow launching, that'll give it the permission it needs. Suddenly the icon will show up and now we can either triple click or we can right click and say open and it'll automatically execute the zap.shell that's in the exec line and get things started up for you.